26 million. That's how many gallons of oil was spilled in U.S. waters in one year alone. We're Team Cattails, and we're here to present our research project on oil absorption by Cattail Fibers. Our team is 12 members, our mentor, Joseph Sullivan, our librarian, Alex Carroll, and our new librarian, Kelly O'Neill. Uh, I'm Belton Blaine Facey, and I'll be presenting tonight with Sophia Hull and Shlomi Chels. And during our presentation, we'll discuss the research problem our project addresses, the current methods that are being used to combat this pro problem, our, our research questions and goals, experimental plan, our current status of research, and our team dynamics. <coughs> the problem our research addresses is the cleanup of oil spills. Oil spills are very harmful to the environment, they damage ecosystems, threaten wildlife, and they hurt the ecology of local towns that rely on beach uh, tourism and fishing for business. In addition, the damage done to the ecosystem often takes a long time to recover from. Current solutions that are being used to combat this problem include skimmers, which condense the area of the oil spill, in situ burning, which is the burning of the spill site to break down the oil, and two of the most popular solutions are dispersants and gelling agents. Dispersants chemically break down the oil <laughs> And while they themselves aren't toxic, they allow the oil to seep down deeper into the ocean, causing even more harm to the environment. Gelling agents solidify the oil so that it's easier to recover. And while they don't let the oil get in that deeper into the ocean, and it, a large amount of gelling agents is required to clean up an oil spill, making it very inefficient and cost ineffective. We, and we look at cattail fibers as a natural absorbent for oil spills. Our research goal is to evaluate the efficiency of cattail fibers as a natural absorbent, evaluate how environmental conditions affect the absorbency of cattail fibers, and compare how cattail fibers do against other natural absorbents. Our first research question is comparing how cattail fibers absorb compared to other natural absorbents. The absorbents we will be comparing cattail fibers to are cotton fibers and rice hulls. We expect cattail fibers to have a higher absorbance of oil per mass because unlike the other two, cattail fibers do, do not also absorb water, which Sophia will talk about later. Our second research question is determining how environmental conditions affect cattail fibers. And we focus on three conditions and we pick these three because and these are three conditions that affect this person the most. Our first condition is weathering, which is the degradation of oil over time. We expect weathering to decrease the absorbance of cattail fibers based on our literature review. All right. Our next factor is temperature, which again, based on our literature review, we expect an optimal temperature of 25 degrees Celsius for, for the absorbance of cattail fibers. Our, the final factor we focus on is wave motion. There is no current research on how wave motion affects natural absorbance, but based on what we know about cattail fibers, we expect a positive correlation. Now I will hand over to Sophia and she will discuss our, our, our experimental plan. Thank you, Belton. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Tonight I will be talking about our experimental plan, our methodologies, and the current status of our research. Our experimental plan is divided into two phases. The first phase will focus on saturation and selectivity of cattail fibers along with our two other natural sorbents, cotton fibers and rice hulls. At the end of phase one, we will do a comparative study analyzing the data from these three natural sorbents. Phase two will test how environmental factors, including weathering, temperature, and wave motion, affect the absorption that we determined in phase one. Before we could start our experimental plan, a study was released in January by Wang et al., which significantly overlapped with phase one of our research. Their study produced the absorption levels for natural sorbents, including cattail fibers and cotton fibers. So to address this, we modified phase one to include a verification of methods portion. This enables us to
to ensure the repeatability of the data and the methods from their study, and also to ensure the accuracy of our data. So as I mentioned, the first part of phase one is a method verification. At first, we found high variability among our data from across our lab subgroups. We decided we needed to refine our methods, which the link will talk about more later in our presentation. After refining our methods, we repeated this method verification of their data, and we found that ours was comparable. Next, we moved on to saturation curves, where we tested the absorption capacity of cattail fibers in beakers of oil over differing amounts of time. We had six different time trials. We used this data to create a saturation curve and found that the amount of time in oil did not affect the oil absorbed by the cattails. We repeated this test for our other two natural sorbents. Part three tests the selectivity. This means that we're testing the water absorbed in addition to the oil absorbed by each natural fiber. After this step, we will do a comparative study to look at the saturation curves and the selectivity data across all three natural sorbents. I will now be talking about some of our preliminary data. This graph shows the amount of oil absorbed by one gram of each of the natural sorbents. As you can see, cotton absorbed a higher, a higher level of oil than cattails, while rice husks did not absorb a comparable amount to either of them. Even though cattails absorb the highest amount of oil, we hypothesize that cattails will do a better job in real-world scenarios. Let me show you why. <coughs> in this video, we have each of our natural sorbents in a beaker of water. We then dipped a paper towel into each. As you can see, rice hulls did not do a good job at keeping the paper towel dry. You will notice that cotton is also not effective at separating the water and the paper towel. Cattails, however, are extremely hydrophobic, meaning that they are able to keep the paper towel completely dry. <laughs> Because of this property, we expect cattails to do a much better job in the selectivity gap in the selectivity test because they will absorb a minimal amount of water compared to cotton and rice hull, allowing them to absorb more oil. Upon completion of phase one, we will have a base level absorption for all three natural fibers. So phase two will focus on simulating environmental factors to see how those will affect the absorption levels for each natural sorbent. We will focus on weathering over time, the temperature of the water and the oil, and the amount of wave motion. Finally, I'd like to tell you where we are in our research. So we have completed our verification of methods, finding that our data is comparable to the study produced last January by Warren et al. And then we moved on to our saturation curve. We found the saturation for each of our three natural sorbents, seeing that cotton absorbed the highest level of oil. Currently, we are starting our selectivity research, and upon completion, we'll be able to do our comparison study. We are also in the process of planting 100 of our own cattails, which we will be able to harvest and use for our future research. By next semester, we plan on starting our environmental factors assessment. I will now pass, uh, pass the mic to Shlomit, who will talk about some of our challenges we face so far. Thank you. So I'll now be talking to you about some challenges our team faced while working through our methodology, the dynamics of our team, and some advice we have to share with freshmen. As Sophia mentioned, we had to adjust our methodology for precision, and I'll walk you through some of the things that we did. At first, we found it difficult to contain our fibers, and were originally placing them within tea stringers before submerging them in oil. We found that this didn't allow all of the oil to come in contact with our fibers, and therefore have switched to just placing loose fibers into our oil, having that mixture then be poured over a mesh 
that goes into an empty beaker. And this is a lot easier to clean and um, easier to then weigh afterwards. We also increased our precision by changing the volume of oil we were using per one gram of cattail. Originally, we were using 100 milliliters, but we found 150 milliliters allowed all of the fibers to come in contact with oil, which greatly in, uh, improved our precision. We also found there was a difference between dry and undried fibers, as I'll show you in the next graphic. As you can see, with our non-dry fibers, we have a much larger standard of error for mass oil to mass capsules than we do in our dry trial. This is because in our non-dry trials, we have different moisture content for each of the fibers being used. By drying all of our fibers, by beating them to 63 degrees Celsius, we were able to have a standardized moisture content, and that is what contributes to our lower standard error. We were able to tackle these challenges due to the different perspectives of our team. We're a 12-member team with majors that range from environmental science and technology to chemical engineering. And because it is a large team, we utilize many of our official positions to help keep everything moving along. We have members that are in charge of contacting the Gemstone staff and our librarian, and we also have a team scribe, which makes sure that we remember everything that we have said during meetings, and also sends a follow-up e uh, email to us with to-do lists for all of our subgroups. We also have instituted a rotating facilitator policy, and what this means is every week a different member of our team will create the agenda for our weekly meeting, and then make sure that we follow through on it throughout that meeting because meeting time is really critical. And this gives everyone getting outside of team meetings. We've been able to stay on track with the progress of our project overall, and we've heavily utilized GroupMe and Google Drive, so that's a pro tip for you. We also found that being flexible is really important considering how much we've had to adjust our methodology. So it's important to come in, be prepared, and plan out what you're going to do, but don't expect it to work on the first or second or maybe fourth try. And just to keep an open mind about that because that's how the research process works. I think Yogi Berra says it best. In theory, there is no difference between theory and practice. In practice, there is. To conclude, Belton today talked to you about the problem of oil spills and some current solutions we have, such as skimmers, chemical dispersants, and gelling agents. We're going to be asking how do environmental factors affect <coughs> cow gel fibers and natural sorbents as their adsorption abilities for collecting oil, and we're going to compare that to some other natural sorbents. Sophia talked to you about our two-phase experimental plan, how we have already completed a verification of methods, We've already found our saturation curves and are now in the process of testing for um, our we're, for our selectivity. We're planting our cattails, and we're also going to be running our comparative study. I talked to you today about some challenges we face in our methodology and how we work through them, the dynamics of our team, and some advice that we had to share. We'd like to extend a thank you to our mentor, Dr. Justin Sullivan, our librarian, Alex Carroll, as well as the rest of the Gemstone staff. Thank you, and we'll now be taking questions.